Hi there and welcome to Hyundai Power Products. My name is Adrian and today we're going to be looking at this DHY6000 SE generator. So what we're going to be doing specifically is showing you how to change the starter motor. Now it isn't something that needs changing very often but occasionally when it's been run with a low battery and after many years of reliable use we may at some point need to replace the starter motor. So I have been asked this question by our technical department as to advice on how to do it. So that's the focus of this video, changing the starter motor. So this particular generator is a lighting tower type DHY6000 SE, but this technique applies to any one of the generators beginning with DHY6 or DHY8. So the 6000 SELR, the 6000 SE, 8000 SELR and the 8000 SELRT. So it covers the whole range. So of course the first thing we're going to do, because we're going to be tackling the starter motor, is to disconnect the battery. So for safety's sake, the first thing we're going to do is to disconnect the 12 volt positive lead from the battery. Now I've already done this one. It is possible to do it with a socket down in through here, but typically you would remove the battery clamp and take the battery out altogether. Only because of my experience, I've managed to do it with it in situ. So that leaves it electrically safe. There's no way it can start, do anything at all, and we're not going to get any electric shock when we disconnect this positive lead from the other end at the starter motor. So at the right-hand side of the machine here, as we look at it with the control panel, we have this large black end cover. Now, I've changed starter motors without removing this end cover because I've done it quite a few times over the past. But for the first time doing one of these, I'd recommend the first thing to do is remove this end cover. So we'll do that next. So 10 mil socket, everybody's friend, the 10 mil socket. We're going to remove the end cover. So I'm going to work my way around removing all the bolts from the outside. But what I will do is leave one of the top ones in loose. And then when I get to the end, all the bolts are out. I can just undo the top one and lift away the end cover. OK, so as we spoke about, last bolt in the top here. There we are, and I can lift the cover away. So with the end cover removed, I'm now going to remove this access panel here. And the starter motor lives in this zone here. So again, 10 mil socket. Told you it was gonna be your friend. Off with this cover as well. So with the end cover removed, I'm now going to remove this access panel here. And the starter motor lives in this zone here. So again, 10 mil socket. Told you it was gonna be your friend off with this cover as well. Now, one thing of note on this machine is that there's no holes in this cover here. So there's no fan behind it. So I can lift this cover straight off. It's just a sheet of metal. If you've got one that's got the holes in it, that'll be the 8000 or the 8000T. There's a fan on the back of this cover which is connected by a little piece of wiring loom with a little multi-plug. If yours has got the holes in it, be very careful when removing this that you don't let it drop and pull the wires out of the fan. So be gentle when you take it off, disconnect the plug. That's just a little bit of advice should you have an 8000 or an 8000 SELRT. The T being the three phase machine. Okay, so yeah, as you can imagine, if there was a fan, you can just hold the cover and just remove the last bolt. And that way you're unlikely to drop the cover you could disconnect the little connector plug that would be going to a fan on here and we can take the cover and fan away as one. This particular model, the 6000, doesn't have that extra fan. So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect it electrically. So here we have the yellow wire which goes to this little spade terminal on the end and that's the solenoid wire. Then obviously we have the 12 volt takeoff wires here, these two thinner ones, and the main 12 volt from the battery. So this nut here, I've used an extension bar so I'm out of the way, 13 millimetres. So I'll just undo this nut. Okay, just loosen it off. Remove the nut and remove these three wires. Okay. Oop, I've taken the washer as well. I'll just pop that washer back on. Pull these wires out of the way. Now you can see here why it's important that we disconnected that positive lead from the battery. Because if I was to touch this against anything metal and it was still connected, it would arc out and that would be dangerous. So that's why we disconnected the battery first. So I'll tuck those wires down there out of the way. Or attempt to. <laughs> okay. So that has now electrically disconnected the starter motor. 
Now, we have one bolt here, which takes a 16 mil socket. That one's easy to get to. There's another one right up on the top. So basically hidden out of sight up above this one. Now it's difficult to get to. I do have a specialist tool I've made for this. And if you've got access to a welder and various bits of tool, then I would probably recommend you make your own, but it can be done with a conventional socket. So first thing, 16 mil socket. I got a little 3.8 drive socket here. And just loosen that bottom bolt off just a couple of turns. Now for the tricky bit, we need to get to the top bolt. So trying to explain why we've taken this end cover off. The bolt we're trying to undo is on the back of this face here. So if I stick my finger in here over the top, I've got my finger there, can you see, on the end of the bolt. So what I've made up is half a 16 mil spanner just welded to any random half inch drive socket. So if I tuck it in around the back, okay, that is now fitted on the nut. So if I take just a half inch drive ratchet, okay, and I've loosened that off. So that top nut is now loose. It may be at a point where I can undo it with my fingers, not quite. So I can just put the spanner back on a couple more times, undo it completely. Because the only alternative to be able to actually access it visually would be to completely remove the whole canopy. But typically, with a bit of ingenuity, it can be done. And of course, another option would be a 16 mil ratchet spanner. Drop down in through the top here, in this plane here. So I've got my 16 mil ratchet spanner, and I'm gonna go down over the top of the engine into the right spot, which is right down in there. Okay, you can see where I am. And then I've got very little room to move, but I can undo it with a ratchet spanner. So I've undone it from the spring washer now, just a few turns, and I'm actually unscrewing it now with my fingertips down in the hole here to a point where it'll come out and I can retrieve the bolt. So with the top bolt removed, I'll just withdraw the bottom bolt. Okay, so that's out of the way. So there we are, that starter motor now. We'll just pull back and there we are. That's the starter motor removed. So you can now see that top bolt that I undid, which was right up in here. Okay, so it's very difficult to get to, as you can see. Now, it is possible, again, with a universal socket. So let's just put a bolt in there to loosen this off. If I just put it back into somewhere near the point where it would be if it's tight. So you can see my predicament. With the starter motor there, I can't get the socket on. If you had a small universal socket, with a 16 mil socket, a universal joint and a bar, it is just about possible to access it from this way. But the way I showed with a ratchet spanner over the top or with a special tool that I've got is probably the easiest way. So to refit the new starter motor, we'll locate it back in the hole here. We'll just line it up approximately right. There we are, that's in the hole. Now I'll just rotate it to align my hole for the bottom bolt. I should be able to just put my bottom bolt in the hole there. Get it started a few turns. Now I'm not going to tighten this up. I'm just going to wind it in. So no ratchet on the end at the moment, just somewhere near like that. Okay, and in much the same way, I've just fed my hands over the top and I'm just going to get this top bolt started and screwed in. I may have to wiggle the starter motor a little bit. That's why I've left it loose. There we go. The bolt's screwing in now. And they do screw in quite easily with two fingers.
most difficult part with this is just getting it loose to the point where it's off the spring washer. Okay, so that's the top one in, bottom one in. So I'm going to use my special tool again. I'll just show this once more. It's a 16 mil ring spanner that I've cut off and I've welded it on any socket. Obviously, that's just a 15 mil socket or was with a square sticking out half inch drive. It could be three inch drive, uh, three eighths drive, but that just gives you that fulcrum point to be able to undo the bolt in the back there. So I'll just nip it up. Okay, so I got it in as tight as I could get it by hand. And there we are. I've tightened it up. Now, with the ratchet, remove my special tool. And that there is the top bolt done up. So round to the back of the machine again, and I'll just make sure that that bottom bolt is done up. Whoop. Okay, so mechanically, that's the starter motor back in position. Okay, so back on with the three wires. There's a black wire, a red wire, and then the battery wire. And then finally, I'll put the nut back on. And then using the 13 mil socket, I'll just tighten up that nut. Now, no need to go absolutely ridiculously tight with this. As you can see, I'm not using the full leverage of the handle, but that is solid, okay? So final thing, solenoid wire back on the little spade. Make sure that's fully home. Make sure there's a bit of slack. And that's it, that's the starter motor refitted. So all we need to do now is refit this cover, refit the end cover, then reconnect the battery, and we're off to go. Okay, so that's the starter motor change. Now. Never said it was going to be easy, and it is very fiddly to get at that top bolt. But you can see with a bit of perseverance, it is possible to remove it and replace it without taking the whole canopy off. So that little tool I've made up was very useful, but a 17 mil ratchet spanner, as long as the head on it isn't too large, will do the job as well. Once you get it loose to the point where the spring nut is come undone, then you can wind it out by hand and replace it by hand afterwards. So there we are. That's how to change the starter on your DHY 6 or 8000 series generator. Well, I do hope you found this demonstration useful. And for more information on this or any of our other products, visit www.hyundaipowerproducts.co.uk. I've been Adrian, and thank you for watching.